I had to shut down a product in kind of its own business that directly fell into this trap. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Future Internet Billionaire. My name is Josh Pegley and I am a founder of a tech startup and I am also an engineer. Today, we are going to dive into three lessons that can save your business or startup from catastrophic failure. You are going to wanna to grab a notebook, you are going to wanna write these downs and make sure this never happens to you. Now let's dive in to today's episode. As always, you guys know what's next if you've watched any of my videos. That's probably one of the reasons that these startups fail. Founders don't drink enough coffee. It's my personal opinion. But all right, let's get into the real stuff now. The way that I actually came up for this video was based on some data I came across from CB Insights. They did a post-mortem interview with 101 failed startups. Now, if you don't know what a post-mortem is, a post-mortem is essentially a review, an interview breaking down the good, the bad, the ugly, the interworkings of what may have happened in these startups. What did they do right? What did they do wrong? The goal of these postmortems was to identify the top 20 reasons why startups fail. Now, the 20 reasons, there's a lot of information and I may dive into the other ones in another video, but today I'm only gonna touch on the top three, which contributed to 60% of businesses failing. I know that's a lot, but just stick with me because it is a big, big percentage and you don't wanna fall into that statistic. Are you ready for this one? Pay close attention, because you really are gonna to need to hear this. The number one reason why startups fail is because they do not like my videos or subscribe to this channel. Maybe they would have seen this video and it would have prevented them from running into a complete failure. So please like and subscribe. I really, really appreciate it. Helps me know you guys like the videos. Well, besides that little joke there, Let's go ahead and actually dive into the real three reasons. Reason number one. This was the number one reason why startups fail. And now this is definitely focused more on tech and internet companies or service-based businesses, but the number one reason why startups fail is because they have no product market need. In other words, there's a popular term, they hadn't achieved product market fit. Now, what does it mean when you don't have product market fit? When you don't have product market fit, what that essentially means is you built a solution that nobody wants or nobody wants to pay for. Now, if a product's free and people want to use it, that's one thing, but a business is run based on the ability to generate revenue. So your product has to be good enough to where the value causes an exchange of money. So you need to build a product that actually generates you money. If you cannot find any customers or users or ways to generate revenue with your product, then that's a very good sign that you do not have product market fit. Now in these videos, I like to actually personally rate, relate my own experiences. I had to shut down a product in kind of its own business that directly fell into this trap. We had built a product for a company that was paying us $24,000 a year for it. And you say, hey, wait, you just said that if you can't generate revenue, then that's a good indicator that you don't have product market fit, but you were generating $24,000 a year. Yes, that is true. But the reason why we didn't have product market fit is because we couldn't land a single customer outside of that one that we had that initially actually approached us about the idea. When they approached us, we said, oh my gosh, this has to be a solution. There has to be need for this because they're paying us $24,000 a year. Other people might want this and other people might pay us $24,000 a year. So we went after it. We built a whole mass market product which required hundreds of developer hours, tens of thousands of dollars in resources in terms of sales time, all to find out that it actually was not needed or wanted by anybody else other than that one company. And even though we were making $24,000, that's not enough to actually even support one person for a year. So we decided we had to shut the business down and kill it and waste probably somewhere in between 60 to 100 grand. It was a painful lesson, 
If you're interested more about a potential downfall of product market fit, I highly recommend researching that, understanding what that is, and checking it out because it's really, really important when you're going into the world of startups. I have another video where I actually talk about what caused the downfall of a, of a company that was worth over billion dollars it raised 1.7 billion in venture capital the company was called quibi it only survived for six months and the primary reason why it died was because of no product market fit i break that whole thing down that whole company their whole rise and fall so go ahead and check that video out it's a really valuable one for specifically for this product market fit scenario number two i need another sip of coffee for this one this is a scary one for most people you got the hair on the back of your neck standing up Scared a little bit? Number two, they run out of cash. I truly believe, especially in the tech world and in the internet, and, and, and when it comes to the world of internet startups, most people run out of cash because they buy into the way of building businesses like Silicon Valley. Now, what is the Silicon Valley way of building businesses, you may ask? They focus on the product and growth and not on revenue. That sounds good in theory. This is why they fall into the, we ran out of cash. If you're one of the rare scenarios, now we, we hear about them, they're written about, but really the rare scenarios where you're growing virally, like a weed, where customers are flooding in your doors, you're probably part of like a zero one percent of businesses. So if you are that business and you're growing virally like a weed and you cannot essentially like even handle the amount of people that are flocking to your business, then it's probably okay to focus on the product and growth at all costs. But if you're not, then this is not the right way to build your business. Now don't feel bad if you're not one of those. I wasn't one of those businesses. I wanted to be one of those businesses, but the true reality of business is that most of us will never fall into that category. We will have to lay brick by brick by brick and it's gonna take a while, so we need to keep an eye on our cash. Now back to the personal story. None of my businesses have ever actually run out of cash, but before I was an entrepreneur myself, I was part of a company, a game development company called Seven Gun Games. They were actually a company that raised a lot of money and bought into the idea of building the Silicon Valley style company. But here's the problem. They weren't in Silicon Valley, they were in Ocala, Florida. Now they raised money, they had the sweet office, they hired the big teams, they they were spending money like it was going out of uh, like, what does it say, going out of business or, like it was going out of style, that's the phrase. They were spending mini money like, <laughs> they were spending money like it was going out of style. Maybe I need to take another sip of coffee, I don't know. And so what ended up happening was, because they bought into that idea and the founder was not an experienced founder, he didn't realize that most businesses take so much longer than you ever expect. And so what they thought was their runway, runway in, a, in the startup world is essentially, how much money do we have left and how we can spend it until we run out of money. So he thought he had all this runway and that the business was gonna pop off and be successful before they ran out, but the reality was what they actually needed was like three times the amount of runway. So all their assumptions were wrong. I actually have an, a video, not to, I, I hate to keep plugging my own videos, but it is true, I have another video where I actually break down some of the major failures that company encountered and why they ultimately failed. They ran out of cash and you know, I wasn't at the company at this time, but I had a lot of friends that still were working there and the founder walked in one day and said hey guys don't bother coming in tomorrow because we are literally out of money the business is gone do not be the business that runs out of money you have to be conservative be a penny a penny pincher when it comes to your business it's always going to take longer than you expect so conserve prepare for the delays prepare for the unknown and don't burn your money like you're in silicon valley and with the anticipation that oh i'll just go raise another million dollars it doesn't happen for 99.9 percent .9 of businesses so don't think it's going to happen for you it's like a final point on this is there's if anybody watches the office there's actually this hilarious quote when ryan from the office uh he starts this company called wolf and when he's sitting with his investors he makes a hilarious quote the first lesson of silicon valley actually is that you'll only think about the user, the experience. You actually don't think about the money. So maybe I can clip that here if we can find it. It's hilarious because it plays on the stereotype of the Silicon Valley style of building businesses. It sounds ridiculous and doesn't make sense. There's a, uh, a quote that I heard also, and it's something that I want you guys to stick with before I move to the next point. And this was by Jason Fried, the founder of Basecamp, which is a really successful tech company. He said, 
You've never heard of a business that went out of business because they were profitable. Really the point of that was you never heard of a business that actually went out of business because they managed their expenses, they didn't burn more than they made, and they actually were able to generate revenue to cover their costs and then some so they could reinvest. So just keep that in mind. If you wanna build a business for the long term, really buy into the idea of stable and good business practices. Number three. All right, this is another really, really big one. It is incredibly important. It's the number three reason why startups fail is they said because we did not have the right team. In the early days of a startup, your team is your greatest asset. What you all bring to the table is what you're really betting the company on. It's not the idea. Ideas in business change, pivots, happen. What you're betting on is the ability, the strengths, the skills, the adaptability of your team members to survive through all the ups, downs, curves, and zigzags that are going to come in your business. Do not just bet on the idea and think you can plug anybody in. I'm telling you, the idea is second to the importance of who you're starting this journey of building a company with. I genuinely buy into the idea that if you have an extraordinary team and a decent idea, you will build a better and bigger business than somebody with an extraordinary idea and a horrible team. Maybe we could get some examples down in the comments below. I have seen this, you have read about it, and I really, really agree with it. Your team is your greatest asset. On the reverse end of them being your greatest asset, they can also be your greatest liability. What happens in the early days of startups is that people are like, they have this idea and they're so excited about it and they just wanna find anybody that can help them with this idea so that they can just build this business because you think, oh, I just need a, a developer and a designer and blah, 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 whatever. And so you bring people in, you don't have a ton of money, so you give them equity. Oh gosh, talk about giving equity. When you give somebody equity, man, you're essentially getting married to that person. The only way to get rid of that person is literally by dissolving the company or buying them out if they are the wrong person and you give equity too early. As a tip and a side note, maybe I'll create a whole nother video about this, always have vesting schedules in place. If you are bringing people into your team and, you, and they're gonna be equity holders, meaning part owners in the business, always implement vesting. If you don't know what vesting is, I'm not gonna go in and here, Google it, maybe I'll create a video. It's really important for anybody getting equity. The final point to this, when you're bringing on team members in the early days, especially if you're evaluating giving them ownership, think about it in the same way you would think about getting married to somebody. This journey has ups and downs and so many things that you are not going to be anticipating. The person you bring in has to, yes, have the skills you need, but it's also really important that you believe in them as an individual, their character, you enjoy working with them personally, you guys are just, whether it's whatever, you just have to click almost like your friends because again, the journey is long, there's not a lot of money, there's not a lot of excitement. It's just, there are ups and downs, so do it with somebody that you believe you can have a good time with in the good times, and you believe will have your back and can support you, and you will enjoy your, each other's company in the bad times. It's really important. Think about it like you think about marriage. To summarize this video, those are the top three points. I hope they were helpful to you guys. The nice thing about these top three points is they're all preventable scenarios for you if you're just aware of them and watch out for it. Let me know in the comments below if you want me to dive into the other 17 top reasons why startups fail. These were the top three. Definitely keep them in mind. Review your notes. I hope you were taking notes or rewatch the video. I have personally experienced most of these things and avoided close calls or unfortunately had to shut down businesses in the past due to those. Learn from my mistakes, learn from my pain, and take these, uh, take these lessons to heart and don't let them happen to you. Thank you all so much for watching my video. I really, really appreciate you taking time out of your day. If you haven't liked the video, I just ask you, could you please like it again if you enjoyed it? 
Let me know if you didn't or what I could do better in the comments below. I would really appreciate the feedback. It means the world to me. Other than that, God bless you guys. Have a great day. I'll see you on the next video.